award winners. Whereas since his childhood in India, Raven Aurora has lived a life of service. And whereas as an early age, Raven Aurora, what it meant to be, he knew what it meant to be hungry after his family lost everything during the war. Despite his setback, Raven excelled in school and qualified as a chartered accountant, which is equivalent to a CPA. He wrote multiple books and became a consultant. And whereas Raven Aurora involved himself with numerous service, uh, service organizations, including the All Indian Boy Scouts, Mother Teresa, and the Missionaries of Charity, and served as president of the Leo Lions Club, all before immigrating to America. And whereas in 2003, Raven Aurora opened the Daba restaurant in India, in India Plaza, and since that time has brought positive change to the community by providing clothing, bottled water, and daily free meals to those in need. And whereas as a member of the Tempe community for the past 12 years, Raven Aurora has not only contributed to the economic vitality of the people of Tempe, but has also contributed to the financial support and leadership to several local nonprofits. And whereas Raven Aurora upholds the dignity of all people from all walks of life, providing jobs, giving incentives to further education, and encouraging the very best in each person that he meets. And so much so that he is known as uncle to many foreign students and immigrants living in the area, whom he helps with academics and the transition of the new culture. And whereas the city of Tempe is grateful for the leadership and service of Raven Aurora and is proud to honor him as a 2015 Don Carlos Humanitarian of the Year. Now therefore, I, Mark Mitchell, Mayor of Tempe, Arizona, do hereby declare September 29th, 2015 as Raven Aurora Day in Tempe, Arizona. Raven, could you please come forward. That, that was quite compelling and emotional. My name is Ibe Abayo. Uh, my background is I'm an industrial psychology consultant, and I'm also an author of three books. My job tonight is to introduce my friend. There's much that I know about him. I'm excited to share space with you tonight in our beautiful city of Tempe, and humbled to have the privilege of introducing my friend, Mr. Ravine. I know there are many individuals who are more qualified to introduce Mr. Ravine, but he has found me fit for the task, and I appreciate his kind gestures. While Ravine's contribution in Tempe have been recorded in the hearts of individuals who has come in contact with him, I would love to share my personal experiences and close with his outstanding engagements in the city of Tempe. Ravine has been a supporter of my journey and the journey of so many others. Mr. Ravine has been instrumental in mentoring and motivating me to complete my two college degrees and to write three books. My friend has focused on my goals and has encouraged me to develop myself and reach for my dreams. The human spirit knows no boundaries except the ones that we create. The idea of an African immigrant encountering an Asian immigrant living and becoming an American, now becoming Americans, brought three continents into one amazing experience. There are several attributes Mr. Ravine possess, but I would like to highlight two of the most important. Number one, his intellectual humility. Intellectual humility is built on the premise that no matter how much we know, we will never know it all. 
When we come to life with this knowing, we, we treat each other with understanding and dignity. Mr. Ravine is intellectually humble in his dealings with people. And in spite of the breadth of his expertise and numerous accolades, Mr. Ravine is often seen bagging groceries for his customers. I have witnessed him demonstrate humility that promotes human, healthy human relationships. He has made me understand more deeply that the importance of education. Ravin believes that education is the key that unlocks closed doors. The second quality is altruism. Altruism is an act of empathy for the well-being of others. Ravin gives selflessly. As a child growing up in India, he experienced abject poverty. He knows what it means to go without food. His experience motivated him to invest in food banks to make sure that no individual goes to bed hungry. In nine years of my friendship with Mr. Ravine, I have witnessed him give, giving advice when needed, quietly providing for the needy, promoting and paying for education for students, encouraging a quest for knowledge, and always providing food and drink to fight the pain of hunger and ignorance. From local and community perspectives, number one, as the owner of Daba Restaurant and the Indian Plaza Cultural Center, Mr. Ravine lives out, his, lives out his beliefs, daily serving customers and his neighbors on the Apache Corridor. Though his business is in the heart of what some see as disadvantage, area, he was not deferred from investing here. He believes his business should not be just profit-centered, but also community-centered. After seeing an unmet need, Ravine donated a portion of his land for the installation of an accessible ramp and crosswalk to the light rail. He serves the hungry, thirsty student, foreigner, ambassador, homeless passersby, and those that find their way to his door. Because he understands the importance of basic, the basics, and he provides this to the community along the Apache Corridor, regardless of the ability to pay. In his focus, on improving the economic and social vitality of Tempe, Ravine has provided summer, summer employment opportunities to students from Tempe and McClintock High School. For younger students who offers dollars, for younger students, he offers dollars for good grades. For little ones, he has purchased inline skates and a safe place to play. He is engaged in the community development and revitalization cultural activities, as well as numerous educational and community programs. Though his restaurant has received many awards, Ravine's personal accolades are centered on his work in the community and his generosity, stewardship, and cultural inclusion. Mr. Ravine also contributes to ASU, Tempe Sister Cities, Hackett House, No Kid Left Hungry, Make a Wish, the annual AIDS Workup, among others.
Mr. Ravine, we, we gather here to celebrate your perseverance, your generosity, and your humility. It has been my honor to tell you a little about my friend Ravine Arora, and I hereby welcome him to the stage to receive the 2015 Don Carlos Humanitarian Award. Thank you. Namaste, which is the traditional Indian greeting which translates literally into the God in me bows before the God in you. There is a God in each one of us. But anyway, thank you, thank you, thank you. Your words, your introduction will always stay etched in me as long as I live. Mayor Mitchell. Vice Mayor Corey Woods, Honorable Past Mayors, Past Don Carlos Honorees, President Gonzalez, Director Hanley, ladies and gentlemen. This moment I did not expect to happen in my lifetime. It's so touching, humbling, and overwhelming that I am trying to come to terms with this because this award is bigger than me. This moment is bigger than me. The real Don Carlos, Mr. Hayden, and the 31 giants who have preceded me, their shoes are too big to fill. I'm a simple refugee kid from Calcutta. I thank the Tempe Community Council for even considering my nomination. Genevieve, I need to single you out for your efforts, but it's Cindy Kaminska who's the real award winner tonight for all her work, untiring effort, accommodation. I was away in the UK and she kept on going. And she kept on going. And now I think she deserves the break. <laughs> I must thank and acknowledge, I need to, my rock, my wife, Clara, who for over 30 years <laughs> has walked the walk with me through highs and lows, looked in the same direction. I share this with my wife. Growing up hungry, I saw mother adding water to stretch the milk so she could feed us. I saw her going hungry. She would have our leftovers. And I asked her one day. She said, no, there are some hungry person will be knocking on our door. He will be hungrier. So I'm going to give part of my food to them. So it's okay, I'll be fine. I can drink water. That woman could walk on the water for us. I know that. She would be really proud to see her son transform from a refugee to a refuge today. I accept this 
on behalf of my mom and all the moms who plant the seeds of righteousness in their kids at an early age. She always encouraged me to give, to give, and to give. I came from a very strict family because education was so important. Dad would often say that education is only an ornament in prosperity, but it will be a refuge in adversity. So school became my refuge. School became my refuge. All our well-to-do, rich cousins distanced themselves from us. I had the choice of robbing my childhood of friends or playing with the poor kids from the surrounding slums. I chose the latter, but I learned a lot. I learned a lot from them, how to be transparent, how to help each other. But there's one particular instance that I need to share with you today. I was four or five years old. These are all things from my memory because we didn't have a camera, we couldn't afford one. So everything that I saw, I remembered, I tried to remember. I was crossing, running past the traffic. There were no crosswalks in Calcutta then. And I fell face down, hard in the center of the street. People saw me, I tried to get up, and then suddenly I see a pair of bandaged hands trying to help me, give me a nudge. I look around, it was the leper, a beggar who used to stay under the house where the apartments were, and he had dashed across in his dolly on that small four-wheel cart to give me a hand, that poor leper. Okay, I held on to him for support, and all I saw in his face was compassion. I accept this honor for that unsung hero who showed me that soul mattered more than the body, because those able-bodied people did not help a young kid. He did. Years later, in my business, the soul of my business is still people, my neighborhood involvement. It's so hardwired into my DNA that I'm like a wounded healer because I'm so scarred by those psychological wounds that I suffered as a child, that I relate to my neighbors on Apache Corridor because I feel them in me, I feel them in me. Humility is an endless journey. It's not something that you do it on a yearly basis or an annual basis or come to a charitable ball and donate with your purse. No, you've got to feel them. You've got to feel those people in you. I feel them. I feel them every day. Dignity is very important to me because that's fundamental. I give not because I have a lot to give. It's because I want to give. I was inspired by Winston Churchill who said, we make a living with what we get, but we make a life out of what we give. So my life is to give in one form or the other. And ladies and gentlemen, I appeal to your hearts and purses today to make this Tempe, great city of Tempe, into a real city of joy, which will embrace inclusion, diversity, empathy, dignity, forgiveness, and equality. On my side, I will do the best I can because humanity is like an ocean, as Gandhi said. Do not give up on humanity. If a few drops are dirty, it does not make the ocean dirty. We should immerse ourselves in the service of others. But I want to thank all of you extraordinary people who are here and some who have been on my train, these incredible passengers on my train. I could name a lot on my table today. I am blessed to have each one of you. Mayor Mitchell, Corey, 
Kenya, Sydney, Kimber, Hugh, Charles, Kathy, and a whole lot of people I see on my train. I do not know when my station is going to arrive. But today, I didn't want to miss out the opportunity of saying thank you 